Hey guys, it's Tila, and today we're going to talk about the font market and whether or not it's too saturated for brand new font makers to join in and be a part of that market. Some of you might know I have a course called Learn Font Making where I teach how to convert your hand lettering into professional sellable fonts. And one question that I'm often asked is, is it even worth it to get started, to put in that time to learn how to make a font, to create your font, to get it up and selling if the market's too saturated? So this week I wanna break all of that down, give you my perspective and my opinion, as well as my experience um, with this market, with selling in this market, and whether or not it's worth it for new font makers to jump in and create and sell their own fonts. So let's get into it. So the short answer is yes, the market is definitely more saturated than it used to be even a few years ago, but no, you should not be concerned about it. And I'll tell you exactly why. So when you have a saturation in a market where you're selling digital goods, it's created, that saturation is created because of demand. And demand is created because fonts are selling. And that's a really good thing because if you want to join a market and sell a product, you wanna make sure that those products are selling to a wide audience. What's unique about fonts is they're like a fingerprint. Any font you create will be unlike anyone else's. No one will make an A exactly the way you do. And even if they did, they're not going to make the same B or C or D, your entire alphabet. They're not going to be able to make it the exact same way that your hand would make those letters. So buyers purchase fonts for different purposes. Is this a fancy font for a jewelry or a fashion biz? Is this a childish font for a children's book? Is this a bouncy or fun font for greeting cards? Different styles of fonts evoke different feelings and they can be used on different applications for different purposes. Even if the market feels saturated, remember that font buyers are looking for a font to fit their needs, whatever that is, and no one font fits every one of those needs. So what can you do? First, if your goal is to sell fonts, it's important to look at which fonts are selling well. I call this part of the equation your selling research. Most marketplaces order their fonts in best selling to least selling. And it makes sense, when you arrive at their site, they wanna show you the most popular fonts first because they're already proven sellers and it gives them the best chance of capturing a sale from you. Take note of the different font attributes associated with those high selling fonts. What feelings do you get when you see them? Are they mostly script fonts or fancy fonts, modern fonts? What kind of buyer would buy them and what purpose would they fulfill? Once you have your selling research complete, you wanna merge those notes with your own style of lettering. The point is not to copy anything that already exists, so don't mistake it for that. It's definitely not that. The point is to implement these characteristics that buyers are looking for, that they've already proven that they're willing to pay for. So once you have all these notes merged with your own style and you begin creating your font, don't cut corners. I always tell students in my course to be the font designer you would wanna buy from. It's really tempting to rush through because you just wanna get it up and selling and making that passive income. But those extra details really go a long way with building up your reputation as a quality font seller. And especially if this is something you're serious about doing, that's going to be invaluable later on. Finally, the last step and arguably the most important step of the entire process, don't rush through your mock-ups. Your mock-ups are what will sell your font. They're your biggest selling tool because you're showing what your font can be used for, how it can be used, and what's included in the font. By showing off your font with great mock-ups, it immediately gives the buyers ideas of how they'd use their font for their own purposes. This is where you're fulfilling their need with your font. If you mock it up on packaging, for example, would it be a high-end brand? Would it be a modern brand, a fancy brand, a kid's brand? You get the point. Luckily, there's a lot of free mock-ups these days and some really nice paid ones too. I tell my students to play around with the free ones so you get the hang of using a mock-up file first in Photoshop, but to invest in paid ones for selling your font and using those paid ones for your font's mock-ups because they'll stand out way more. Many people will use the free mock-ups because they're free since they're so readily available and you don't wanna be using the same mock-ups as dozens of other font makers are using for their own mock-ups. You wanna stand apart from the crowd and this is a really easy way to do that. If you'd like to make your own mockups, that's even better. Obviously no one will be able to compete with it because those mockups are unique to you. I have a course where I teach exactly how to do that. It's called Mastering Mockups and I will link to it above. 
So moral of this video is don't let the current saturation of the market scare you from ever beginning or attempting to create and sell your own fonts as a new font maker. Whatever you make will be different than anybody else's out there and who's to say that that's not exactly what buyers are looking for. When you're beginning, get a leg up on everybody by getting that selling research done before you even sit down to create your font, execute it well, remember to be the font designer that you would like to buy from, and please do not rush through those mockups. I know it's really, really tempting to just get it up there and get it selling because you put in all that work to that point, but spending that time on your mockups is so important. I sometimes spend more time on my mockups than I even do on creating my own font. Seriously, it's that important. If you'd like to learn more about hand-lettered font making and more selling strategies just like these ones, head on over to learnfontmaking.com and you can take my free font making mini course and check out the full course there too. We've got a super supportive community of over a thousand font makers in our private Facebook group that you'll also get to have access to. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can be notified of new font making videos just like this one. Once again, my course is located at learnfontmaking.com. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.